on the football front, Manchester United, my club that I love dearly, have finally agreed a fee to sign a player of notoriety to add to our illustrious squad and team full of world-class players. Not. But yeah, um, we finally signed somebody. We finally decided to pull our finger out and address a glaring hole within our squad and our team. Don't get me wrong. It's probably not the signing I would have wanted right now. Um, it probably isn't going to be enough if this is the only signing we have, but it's a good step in the right direction. But this has been some interesting blowback or feedback and just conversation around um, the signing potential signing coming up of Donny van der Beek from Ajax may not have agreed a 35.7 million fee for him and the reaction from the fan base of United has been very strange um we're a really odd fan base for a big club um there doesn't seem to be a coherent narrative or a coherent kind of um not coherent there doesn't seem to be a, like a collective view on where the real holes are in our team or who the kind of culprits are for our current demise or who's to kind of blame or yeah there's it, everyone it just seems to change depending on who people kind of favor the most in any sort of team or in our team specifically which is very strange I, i've never really seen that before i'm not sure if it's a consequence of us being so um crap over the last decade or so um, I'm not sure if this has always been there or I'm not sure if this is like a con uh, natural reaction to um, so much success in the beginning. But regardless, it's very odd to see us kind of uh, devolve in a way where some people are questioning the validity of signing someone like a Van der Beek. Some people are saying that he's not necessary in our squad. Some people are saying that he's not going to start. What's the point? Some people are saying that he's going to replace Pogba. It's just very, very odd impressions, very odd opinions from a fan base of people that you would expect a little bit better from, especially considering the level of players that we've been used to seeing and the level of winning we've been used to seeing too. But hey, ho, what can you do? So an article from The Guardian says, Manchester United have agreed that 35.57 million, 35.5.7 million fees signed Donny Van der Beek from Ajax. It says, Manchester United... I've reached an agreement um, from with IX with Donny van der Beek. The fee is 35.7 uh, mil, which is 40 million euros plus add-ons with personal terms agreed with the Netherlands been filled on the deal until 2025. Of course, big up Fabrizio Romano. He broke that story and then all the other English journals jumped on in it and all the Sky Sports Muppets started to act like they were in the know and they're not. Um, van der Beek has attracted interest from several European top clubs, including the uh, um, having excelled in the Dutch side over the past three seasons with Real Madrid and Barcelona among those who have linked uh, with the 23-year-old in recent months. United, however, beating the Spanish club to the player, having been in touch with his agent and maintaining strong links to the every division club, thanks to the former goalkeeper Edwin van der Sar, who's Ajax chief executive, the transfer should be completed this week. Van der Beek's... Um, scored 41 goals in 175 appearances for Ajax first team having joined the club as 11 year old and having previously been tracked by Tottenham there are indeed developments that keep him out of the selection the Ajax manager Eric Ten Hag said we will see what happens we will make an announcement as soon as there is some more clarity the fact that he did not play does not indicate a direction the request to not to let him play did not come specifically for one side we do that together agreements have been made about a possible transfer and if that possibility arises you must also cooperate and it continues as the signing of Van der Beek would be a potential creep for Man United and Oligar Solskjaer who wants to strengthen his midfield options before a new season. Talks of a potential signing of Jaden Sancho from Bruce Dortmund have yet to be resolved while United are also in market for a new centre back. So, I guess on one side of it, you can be happy if you're a United fan. For myself, I am happy. I think we needed to replace Ander Herrera, who I think Donny Van der Beek is possibly going to fill that position because I think he's versatile in the same way Hando Herrera was, but probably has a lot more technical ability and maybe is a bit more of a skilled football player and all around maybe more talented than Ander Herrera. But that position of Ander Herrera was very vital. I wasn't for himself. I wasn't, I wasn't um, one of the people that were happy when we saw them in the first place. I thought we should have gone above and beyond to try and keep him at the club. I think we made a last bid contract uh, renewal to try and get him to stay, but he didn't think the contract was... Um, matched his kind of own impression or value of himself so he kind of went over to PSG and of course you know we saw him play in the Champions League and put in a pretty decent performance for somebody who everyone thinks is a bit shit but I don't really think that I think he's got his strengths and I think when used well he's a great addition to a squad regardless he got sold and I think we were missing that player because you know Scott McTominay bless his effort bless his heart and his dedication but he's not anywhere near the level of Ander Herrera and he's not even come to his full potential of his own playing style wherever that is in himself anyway so 
I still think we needed a first team senior player to come in who would be a viable option to deputize for the likes of Paul Pogba, Bruno, whenever they get injured or suspended, or just to add a bit of rotation to the side if we want to mix things up, even if he wants to play as a deep lining playmaker in the number six role like Matic, which I don't think is his strength. I do see him more as a box to box player who would maybe deputize for the likes of Pogba and Bruno, but I could definitely see um, Solskjaer did you know deciding to put him as a number six i think having watched a few videos of his him playing you've seen him wore the number six you've seen him wear the number eight number ten as well so i'm assuming that versatility is what probably uh uh peaked oligano soul sharks interest but then on top of that an issue i have with it is that i still think there are some other issues other areas of the pitch where we need to address left back we still need a viable option there i don't i'm not a believer in luke shaw i think he's been at the club enough for me to come to the conclusion that he's never going to be good enough to play for my united i don't think he's good enough for me to play for another top side top four side i think his time has been and gone i also don't think brandon williams is the option is the answer either i think he's a good backup he's tenacious he's young he's obviously got a lot of potential but at the moment we need a senior member of our squad to fill that position or to kind of give us an outlet at the flanks or at fullback because if we decide that we're going to stick with Aaron Rambisaka long term who isn't the best on the ball but is probably one of the best defenders in the league in his position I think we need to have on the other side an out and out fullback who can attack that flank um, and provide some support for our attacking fours um, especially on the counter and then we also need a centre back. We obviously wasted, I think, a lot of money on Harry Maguire. I think Harry Maguire is not an eighty million um, pound defender, and under any circumstances, but we had to pay the English tax, and um, it it goes to show because we're now having to look for another centre back to complement him. I think in another top side, if you were playing for, you know, let's say even if you played for Man City, I think. Um, Maguire's position would be questioned if you play for Man City because his performances have been very questionable um, his turn of pace is not there at all his turning circle is not there and he's a lot slower than what I imagine him to be actually from the times we saw him play at Leicester maybe Leicester had a different way of playing that maybe made him more compact so he didn't really see deficiencies in pace but I didn't think he was that slow but anyway regardless we need a partner for um, Harry Maguire we also need a, another person to fill in for Matic a specialist in that position as in a, a specialist DM who can deputize maybe a center back when one of our center backs is injured and has that kind of um, defensive knowledge or defensive kind of mindset in order to kind of stay home when everyone else is attacking. I don't think if I that option, I still think we need a specialist. And then we also need somebody, in my opinion, who's going to push or maybe compete with Rashford on the right hand side flank, which is if, if whether that's a Sancho or somebody else um, that's maybe not uh, as glitzy as a signing. But we definitely need somebody on the right hand side that um can kind of you know uh, that we can rotate around because as bad as Daniel James has kind of played in the last what since the restart, I still think there's a place for him, especially in the functioning side. You can still put in a Daniel James and maybe with a bit of coaching, whether it's the next manager or this current manager, you could maybe get a lot out of Daniel James. But I think in a current system, um when you deputize um. James when you when you take off Rashford and put on James the dropping quality is too low it's too much so I think if you have somebody else there to fill the flanks who's not maybe performing as well or maybe you know sorry isn't maybe as a bigger name but can perform to that level I think that will kind of go a long way to kind of push all the players to know that hey your spot is up for grabs and also provides a different sort of options going forward so those two positions I think need to be addressed more so in Donny Van and Beek but I get it as a player like of, of his of his quality comes to the market he's versatile you're gonna have to snap him up you're gonna have to buy him you know it makes complete sense um and it definitely does kind of fill a lot of the gaps that we have going forward in our team um then the issue comes with people saying that he's going to replace Pogba or Bruno which is funny because Bruno at the moment is like the main United sort of like love child for you know for just reasons I think he did come in and had that sort of Cantona effect in terms of he's such a quality he's such a step above what we already have that he was bound to cause some kind of reaction but we didn't you know I don't think anyone kind of anticipated us getting the, um, that level amount of penalties and him converting them so well and he had having such a good impact in the final third and always kind of looking for the adventurous ball even though you kind of waste the possession a lot um, I think that obviously was a good signing in terms of you know that whole cultural reset they keep talking about right that spin they keep giving us I think Bruno is a good is a good um, representation of it he was a cultural reset because he um, raised everyone's expectation again 
people then started to kind of talk about hey we need to actually start winning things we need to go for trophies we can't be happy for fourth because we had a Bruno Fernandez in and it wasn't all on Pogba and then um some obviously some fans were like hey we don't need Pogba because we got Bruno but of course you need as many good players as you can get a hold of and Pogba is a once in a generation player too selling a Pogba and trying to replace him I don't trust our board. I don't trust our scouting department to do that in a competent way. So I'd rather keep hold of Pogba. And I still think he's one of our most important players anyway, regardless. And I think they complement each other really well. And if you add another quality defensive midfielder, maybe to kind of deputize for Matic when he's injured or when he needs rotating, you've got a pretty solid def- midfield. Now, defense is a bit shaky, but I think if you get the midfield sorted out and allow us to kind of create and hold the ball a bit more because I'm not really a fan of the counter-attacking football we're playing at the moment. I still think that's a bit myth. I'm not a fan of that way of playing because I think, you know, as soon as somebody defends against us in a low block, we kind of are nullified. I think once we have ball playing uh, midfielders in our midfield and we have competent and really deadly strikers playing up front, we can probably offset the amount of goals we might leak um, with our lack of pace at the back or with our lack of commanding centre-backs and whatever they may be. Um, again, I'm happy with the signing. I'm not going to be happy with the only signing that comes through. We need a lot more players to kind of step in uh, in the senior mantle and kind of take the reins but you know it's a good sign going forward again it's a it's a funny spin from united as poor as per usual just when the pressure starts to like hot up and we've seen clubs like chelsea signing every player that they need in the position that's necessary that they walk in straight into the first team or they go on the bench i think of course the board saw all the kind of negative press that they were going to um generate so they decided to kind of pull you know a rub out of the hat and kind of give us find a big but this isn't enough we need more and hopefully we see that in the next couple of weeks oh yeah the season starts soon as well so we need to see that pretty soon mate pretty sharpish um 